So I'm recording. Right. What I'll do first of all, if I can just get you to tell me your name right. and just say, tell me how long you worked at Wesker. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if you just say, my name's Di Hickman. And... My name is Diane Hickman. I worked at Westcott for just over 40 years. And can you say when you started and when you finished? I started at Westcott on the 29th of July, 1946. And I can't remember the date <laughs> I finished. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll get you do that one more time because it's quite a useful little pack. If you could just say say to me, my name's Di Hickman, and I started working at um, Westcott in 1940, 1946. I worked at Westcott through to whatever. Yeah. Was, yeah. You could probably... Um, work out when I actually left because I was 61, not 60. Right. Because, um, the, well, you know, it changed from one government department yeah, to another. Yeah. And it was, you know, it was British Aerospace when I left. Yeah. And I've been retired... Oh well, gosh! No, my, don't, don't worry at the moment. My it, 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 brain to be honest, is this not isn't as much as anything just to have an ident on the beginning of the, yeah, of the recording, I'd, just so that yeah. if at some stage in the future somebody sees this and it hasn't, I haven't written on it, you know, yeah. they know it. So <laughs> if I can just get you saying, I'm, my name's Diane Hickman, yeah. and I worked at Westcott. Okay. Yeah. Start again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My name's Diane Hickman. I worked at Westcott um, from 29th of July 1946 after the um, site opened on the 1st of April 1946 and uh, yeah okay right just tell me a bit about your background you know where you went to school and how it was you came to to start working at Westcott right um, I was at school down at the village village school um, until I was about, I think, about 12, I think. I'm thinking back now because um, it was at the time, obviously, the war hadn't finished and my parents didn't want me to travel to Aylesbury um, while the war was on. So I stayed down at Grendon School longer than I might have done. And um, the reason oh, I went to Queen's Park School in Aylesbury, I think it was for two or three years, but had to travel on the half past seven bus from here. <laughs> um, and then fortunately, my mother had got a colleague in Aylesbury who she used to work with. So I used to go to her for have a cup of tea and then walk down to Queen's Park School. And uh, I can't remember how long I was there, but I think I left when I was 15. So because um, when I broke my ankle down here, fell <laughs> falling on the, the banana skin, <laughs> which is typical, um, my father was working for... Um, uh, he wasn't. Um, he hadn't got a um, a small holding, but they used to go out doing other people's work, uh, sort of farm type work. My father used to drive a tractor and this sort of thing. And opposite the school down here was an allotment then, which of course is houses now. And my father happened to be there that day fortunately. So they got him over to the where I was and he brought me up home um on his sitting on his bike. <laughs> and um and then they had to get the doctor in obviously. He thought I'd only sprained it. But and of course in those days they kept you in bed, which was a pain. <laughs> and um then I in the in the end it wasn't get any better so I had to go and have an x-ray which of course they found a break 
and so I had to have my leg in plaster, which and it uh, <laughs> for quite a while, which meant I was off school for a while, which was I was still down here then. So uh, yeah. So how did you come to hear about the job at Westcott, and how did you? What was the process by which you were recruited, and how did you start working down at Westcott? Well, um, obviously, when I having or oh, going back to breaking that ankle, I couldn't do the what they used to call the. Um, it wasn't the eleven plus then, was it? It was a, whatever they called it in those days. I couldn't do it because they used to give me um, work to do at home, but that's not the same as doing it at school. And so um, I didn't go through the process of, um, like they do now, going on to secondary school and this sort of thing. I didn't do that. And um, so this is why I left school at 15. And then obviously went to, there was a place in Aylesbury called, um, not child recruitment or something like that. Um, and I went there to see what jobs were available. The first one they gave me was a florist, <laughs> which I said, no, thank you, because I had to do all the dirty work before I'd trained to, you know, to do fl flor floral things. But then they gave me um, the, a clerical job at Westcott. Well, it was a clerical job, but when I was first there, I had to use the filthy um, duplicator, you know, where you had to put the, the black ink in and stand there and turn the handle. Um, so that's what I did. But... During the time I was doing that, they allowed me to sort of teach myself to type. Um, eventually, after some time, they sent me to the um, RAF, RAE school at Farnborough. Um, it was, you know, nothing to do with the Farnborough site, but it was in Farnborough where the school was. They sent me there, I, they used to take me there on a Monday and fetch me back on a Friday. And um, then how, I was there for three weeks. And then having been there, um, they sent me to another typing school in Oxford, which meant I had to go on the bus into Aylesbury and then get the bus from Aylesbury to Oxford. Um, and uh, then... I was doing shorthand from Oxford, but I did do um, learning shorthand at home because I'd got, my mother had got her invalid sister living here as well. She was always in bed. So she used to help me and listen to me um, trying to um, decide what some of the figures were, you know, trying to do shorthand. And um, then, I know it was 1959, um, I was doing a temporary secretary's job. And so they then sent me to London, to a place called Shell Max House. I had to go there for an interview. Um, and I was told that although I was doing the work temporarily, I'm, I wasn't to guarantee of getting the job, but I did. So <laughs> I became a full full time secretary to one of the section directors, and um, the first one um, I can't even remember what the first one's name was. Um, then I went to one or two of the secretaries after that. If their secretary left or um, there was a vacancy, I I did that. Um, so um, I did, I think I worked for about five different secretaries in the end. And um, I was with one of the um, bosses 
as secretary when I actually left. <laughs> right, so it was quite a career, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> so, <coughs> um, what was it actually like there? 1946 start there, and what was going on? What you know? How much of what was going on did you understand? How much were you allowed to know about what was going on at Westcott at that time? Well, I didn't get to know an awful lot of what was going on apart from. Do you know the um, Cheveline? The name Cheveline was one of the... That was a very secure job, and I had had to be secured. Somebody had to come and see me and make sure I understood that I wasn't to say a word about what I was doing. I was obviously then working for the boss who was working on Cheveline, but I had to keep it all you know, secret. But in forty six, I mean, how much, how much of what was going on in nineteen forty six did you know? How much, how much did you understand what was going on there? In um, well, I don't know really. Um, I don't suppose I understood what was going on, but what was interesting was, of course, there was old RAF buildings there then. And I was in the old Building 80, as it was called. But at the back of those buildings was what they called Airmanship Hall. And it was interesting to see all the rockets in Airmanship Hall. And then when they all had to be cleared out, when the buildings were going to be knocked down, um, the V2 was sort of driven through Aylesbury which was uh, quite interesting. But I didn't actually, I mean, I did the work I was supposed to be doing, but I can't say I understood a lot of what was going on. I knew it was to do with rocket motors, and every so often you'd see a noisy firing or hear it as well. <laughs> I mean, you could, if they did some of the noisy ones, you could hear them down here. If I was a, happened to be at home, you could hear them down here yeah did you ever actually go and see any of the let me just, i'm just going to have a little tweak here um did you ever actually go and see any of the tests going on yes i you, did yeah yeah i mean you, you there was one the... um no i'm not sure i think it was k site you know k site no it was it was a big site, and there was a chap named is uh, Tommy Thompson. He was called. He lived in Aylesbury, and um, one or two of us were taken to. We had to go in the sort of room where all the switches and things were, and um, we could then watch what he was doing, and we could see. And he told us which of the buttons he was going to press to start the firing off. You know that was that was interesting. Um, but uh, you know, other than that, um, we didn't actually visit any of the other sites. So. Uh, um, and as far as the security was concerned at that stage, I mean, had had you had to be security vetted to work there and or did you know you'd been security vetted to work there? no and in actual fact what i hadn't said um when i first went to work there they supplied transport to take us in and i was the only one out this way for a while um so they used to come and pick me up and that was it and take me in um, no, we didn't have a security gate, not like there was eventually. And um, then uh, it got so that there was one of the directors lived just along the road from here. So they used to pick the two of us up. And then it gradually increased with um, the number of people out this way. Um, I mean, they weren't what I call decent vehicles. They <laughs> they fetched us in. <laughs> But um, 
No, so th this is what used to happen for, and then eventually they had I don't know what you call them, articulated buses, and they used to get us all into one bus and go around the villages and dropping us off or picking us up in the morning. That's what they used to do. Um, and then, um, you know, eventually, well, it was, I I had to be transported for quite a long time because I've actually been driving, I'm guessing about just over 40 years. So um, it um, until then, you know, I had to have transport in. So that's what they used to do. Those were the days when you used to have the works bus, wasn't it? You know, yeah. people used to go go to work on because I mean, you know, Calvert and all these sort of mm. places used to have a work. But bus. these were, um, I think they were the RAF buses because they were always that what I call dirty green colour. <laughs> all the vehicles were because they were all all the RAF vehicles that they were using, and um, so. You know that's um, that's what happened. They used to. What, what so. was the atmosphere like? I mean, was it was it a fun place to work? Did you enjoy working there? Did, you know what? Oh yes, like? I did, because um, now I can't remember for what reason the. Oh, I know what it was when they had the, they had a fiftieth anniversary. And. Of course, I'd been there, well, I'd actually left, the, I can't remember, there again, I can't remember when I actually left, but um, the director I was working for, um, he, I worked for him temporarily because his secretary at the time left and they gave me his secretary's vacancy and... Um, so when I actually, well, left, but until he got a new secretary, I was still working for him part time. Um, and uh, I had to be paid by uh, another firm, not not the government, you know. Um, and then um, we had a, well, <laughs> when I should have been leaving, we had a, party for me in the so not in the social club in the um a senior members canteen it was attached to the other canteen we had a do in there for a lunch party you know and presents and all sorts <laughs> and in fact on that table there they were all my retirement presents from Westcott um the blue vase in the corner was from the people in Chorley because um, my boss's boss was in Chorley and so they actually came down from Chorley for my party and um, then they they knew I was into the porcelain dolls so that was why one of the presents was and that music centre was what the yeah, British Aerospace gave me. I had to choose something not more than 250. And it was a bit more, but they still paid for it. <laughs> that yeah. was a good figure, though, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was quite a good sum of money, actually. Um, I mean, I, I knew from other people they were going to ask me what I would like. So my boss at the time asked me what I'd like, and I said, well, I know what I'd like, but if it's more than you're paying, I'll pay the rest. Oh, OK, then he said, tell me what you want. So I told him that. And um, because at the bottom, you can put five, uh, no, four discs in at the same time, four, four CDs, you know. And it just changes when one's finished, it changes to the next one. And I knew somebody had had one, a set like that. And um, so then when um, <laughs> I said the little bit like 
people do when they've got to say thank you for their presence, you know. <laughs> and uh, then, um, you know, that's that's how it happened. And then, as I say, I was working temporarily until his other secretary arrived. Yeah. Were there sort of work stances and, you know, Oh, yes, work? in like the beginning. Yeah. Yes, there was. In fact, I'd, <laughs> I'd got some photographs up to put on the board on Saturday and I didn't put them on. <laughs> yes, they... I can't... I don't suppose it was the first year it was open, but fairly soon after it was open, they used to have an annual ball and you went in long dresses and this sort of thing, you know. So, um, oh, yes, that was... Uh, but then all of a sudden that stopped. I, I have no idea why, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, oh yes, they did have social evenings. You know, as I say, they did have a a ball every year, which was very good. So, yeah. oh, and, to... sorry. sorry. <laughs> and we had a at one time we had a couple who taught us old time dancing. That was that was the best. That really was. You know, they were not a young couple, but they were obviously into old time dancing. And there was a lot of us went to that. And um, it was really good. Yeah. Going back to, to 46 again, I mean, at the, at the back end of 1946, the first Germans started to arrive at, yeah. at Wesker. Were you aware of them? Yeah. And, you know, I mean... Mm. So, what can you just talk about? You know, what happened when they arrived, and where did you know where did they stay? What was and did you know what they were actually doing there? Um. Well, some of them, um, you know, the entrance to the club. Well, down that side, there was still some of the RAF buildings, and some of them actually lived in those buildings. And, um, I mean, we knew, obviously, that they were coming and how many there was going to be. Um, I'm glad you reminded me of that because um, when I was at the typing school at Farnborough, um, when they, I can't remember which, what date it was, but when they they brought me home on the Friday and when I, I sort of arrived home, I was told there had been a, you know, a bad accident. And I was told that there was 20 ambulances went in, but there wasn't, I discovered afterwards. But there was one of the Germans was killed and one of the English people. And then there was, I can't, I'm not sure exactly, it might have been three who were badly injured. And that was one of the, something blew up. I can't remember for the life of me what it was, but something blew up. Yeah. And um, then... I'll... Oh, then there was... <laughs> Talking about accidents. Um, when I was... Do you know Building 100? No. Well, that was one of the, what I call, better buildings. Um, I was working for one of the secretaries in there. And... Of course, one of the things I did, I'd, I'd become a first aider. And um, when I came back from, must have been one of the Oxford, when I went to the, the Oxford school, must have been when I came back from there, um, I heard there'd been a bad accident. And my boss said to me, he said, of course, it was... Um, at the end of the corridor where my boss's office and my office were, not far along, really. And he said to me, I said, I hear there's been a bad accident. Well, I haven't been here. It might have been when I was old. It might have been when I was on holiday. I think it was more likely to be when I was on holiday that this happened. He said, well, I'll tell you now, he said, I'm glad you weren't here because he said, being a first aider, you'd have been first on the on the scene. And he said, 
I'm glad you didn't have to do it. So, because it was bad. And I said, can I go and look where it was? Oh, yes, he said, because there was still a policeman on the room, because it was a big room with all sort of glass bits and pieces in, you know, and all that sort of thing. Um, and uh, he said, yes, talk to the policeman, he'll let you go in. So I went in and I could see what had blown up and this sort of thing, um, which in a way was interesting, but it was bad when, because the chap that was in there, he was killed. And then there was another one badly injured. Um, so that's the sort of thing that, that happened, you know, but that was, um, as I say, that was a decent building then, um, sort of a, a progressing from the old RAF buildings where we were. The, <coughs> when, I mean, when the Germans started to arrive, and bear in mind, this was, you know, only about 18 months before, they'd been building rockets and throwing mm, them over here trying yeah. to kill us. Mm. Um, what was the, you know, how did people feel about the Germans arriving here then? What, what did they, you know, were they suspicious of them? Did they... I don't them? think so. I I was never aware of um, anybody being concerned about them coming. Um, in fact, on one or two occasions, I I went to his office and did shorthand for one of them, and he he was very nice. He he only lived at Winslow, and um, the no, it was the senior one of the group that was killed in the explosion and um and i say some you know they didn't have to be any bother and i didn't i wasn't aware of anybody being concerned about them being there so um did, i mean how much i mean how much did they associate with with the other members of staff socially i mean um, no, I wouldn't say they, um, mixed socially, because we didn't, I mean, it had reached a point then when we weren't having the dances and socials and this sort of thing, um, but they were okay as far as, um, you know, being sort of, uh, social with other people, um, it wasn't a problem we didn't find, you know, and the, well, there was a couple of them that I did shorthand for, and, um, you know, they were really nice, so. And from what you, 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 you know, what you saw of them when you spoke to them, I mean, did they seem to be happy to be there? Did they think, did they give you the impression they thought they were doing some useful work there? Oh, I think so, yes. I think um, they were, you know, well, for want of a better explanation, pleased to be there. Um, and uh, I can't even remember when they started leaving. You know, it was because obviously they did, as I say, the, the, the boss of the group, he was killed in an explosion. Um, and then uh, they gradually left because one used to live in Aylesbury on one of the estates. Um, in fact, I think two of them did. I can't even remember. Was there seven altogether, I think? And they lived in various places, you know, where I think Westcott had looked for accommodation for them, you know, so, um, yeah. No, they were, they were quite nice people, actually. Um, they spoke good English, <laughs> which they needed to, you know, it, uh, working with English people. Did, I mean, did, presumably a lot of them, sort of, some of them stayed on in the area and had kids and stayed, you know, lived, carried on living in the area even after they'd finished working at Westcott, did they? Um, I don't know that they did that. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what actually happened to them when they were gradually leaving, you know. the I know one of them that lived at Winslow, he died, but that was through illness, not, I uh, know, I think he probably had cancer, but um, 
but there was another one lived at Winslow. He was very nice. Um, one or two of them had um, sort of strange names. Well, not strange, na sort of nicknames because of what their name was, you know. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, Can you think of any? Um... um One I can think of whose proper name was Herr Treutler. But that wasn't his nickname, that was his name. Um, I can't remember if there was... I know one of them in particular had a um, nickname, but I can't remember who it was. But... Uh, uh, just... Did they bring... Families over with them. I mean, did you know? Were some I don't married think. And... No, I don't think so. I don't. Um, I wasn't aware of where their family lived. I don't think they did. You know, I'd be surprised if somebody tells me afterwards that they did. But <laughs> I wasn't aware of them bringing families over. Did, did any of them actually get married here? You know, did they meet local girls and. and... Get married over here? No, I don't think the Germans did. There was, um, no, one, one of the girls, she married an Australian and moved out there, but that was nothing to do with the the Germans. Mm. Mm. Um, Westcott was taken over, I mean, um, I think it was Ministry of Supply. It when started, started Ministry of Supply, uh, yeah. And then it was taken over by RAE um, in mm. 1947. What, what was the feeling about that amongst the people who worked there? Did they consider that to be a good or a bad thing? Well, I think as far as people like myself, I think we were we just thought, oh, we've got a different name, you know, and that was... Uh, um, I don't think we thought much about it, you know. It was... Uh, Seem to be okay. Um, uh, John, this is one from. Do you know John Becklake? You know John. Maybe you don't. I mean, Becklake. Yeah, John Becklake. He was there on Saturday. Yeah, I thought yeah. probably. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I can't he's... say I knew him that well, but no, I, no, but I know he was there. Yeah. Because... <laughs> um, he's got. He, he asked me to ask you, what was Building Eighty? What did they do there, and who worked there? Well, Building Eighty was where I first went, which was, as I was saying, that old RAF buildings, just single-storey buildings, you know. And it was mostly... Building 80 was um, a clerical office where I was when I wasn't doing the filthy... <laughs> um, there was a drawing office was in there, which obviously wasn't very big. Um, the type, the other typists were in there, and the library. So it was, um, there was nothing technical going on, you know, it was uh, um, really, um, as I say, um, library and things like that. That's what Building 80 consisted of. I mean, the other one he asked me, what he asked me to ask you was, what was the big house in Winslow? The what? The big house. He's got a note here. There was a there was something they called the big house that was in Winslow. In Winslow. Yeah. I don't know where John picked that one up from. But I didn't. Well, I know there is a big house in Winslow, but I wasn't. I wasn't aware of the fact that it had anything to do with Westcott. Um, I don't know where he got this one from. He hasn't He's... mixed it up with Whitchurch, has he? Because um, it's going off the, you know, off it a bit. But there was a place in Whitchurch where people used to work on rocketry and things like that. Not no firings or anything like that. But then the people in Whitchurch transferred to Westcott. 
I wonder whether it's Whitchurch he's got and not Winslow. Yeah, maybe. Um, there is a big, what I call a manor house in Winslow, but I wasn't aware of the fact that had that had anything to do with Westcott. No, I mean, I, I used to live there. I used to live at Redfield. Oh, right. You know, you, you're thinking Redfield. Mm. Yeah, my dad had the farm next to Oh, Redfield, right, yeah. So I know that quite well. Mm. So, um, so you know where this big manor house is that I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, when I was... I think that was... Lord and Lady, somebody lived yeah, there. Um, um, Leons, was it? Or, or Verney? No, it wasn't Verney. Verney no, was Verney was Stephen Gladen. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it was the Leons who used to live there. And I think when I... It could have been. Yeah. I mean, it could have then gone on to... Um, yeah. I don't know whether it was <coughs> not Lady Buckingham or somebody like that, I think, used to live there. When I was there, I mean, when, when my dad had the farm there, it was actually an old people's home. Oh, was it? Yeah, they converted oh, it right. old people's home there. Yeah. So, um, for all the time that I was living there, anyway. Mm. And then it got sold off and became a commune. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. Like I said before, my, my dad was a farmer, you know, over at Winslow, and, I mean, every, every now and again we'd hear the rockets going off and so on. How did the locals around here react to what was going on there? Did, you know, were they, you know... Well, they didn't say an Sorry, awf I was talking about awful that. lot about it, but... Sorry, can I, can I get your stuff? Could you just say something like, the locals didn't say an awful lot about it? Um, the locals didn't say an awful lot about it, but I think if some of the firings were particularly loud they were not too pleased about it, you know. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> I say, you could hear some of them down here, you know, because I've, you know, if I'd been at home, I've heard them, you know, very plain. So... <laughs> but they didn't, I mean... They didn't really complain, no. The only... And now I've talking about complaints... The only ones that, the only complaint I know of was, well, you know, if you're going up the A41 to Westcott, you go up a bit of a slight hill and you've got a farm on your left. Well, across the field from there was what I called K site, which was the big site. Well, the people at the farm there, they complained because it depended on the um, wind which way the smoke came and it did come across the road sometimes. And they, this farmer there complained about it. But that's the only complaints I know of. Yeah. And they were actually getting the smoke from the... Mm. From the, mm. um, from the well, it was only one large field over, I suppose, to where this firing site was. So, uh, but that's the only... It didn't actually get complaints around here, you know, but, um, you know, if there wasn't... Well, I can't remember any complaints, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, I say, we, you know, we were over at Winslow and we could hear it as clear as a bell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Testing them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you already talked about this a bit, actually, but this, again, this is one John Beckman. Um, the display in Airmanship's Hall. What? Where did that? What did? Where did that start? What? You know, what was taken in there? What was that all about? The... Well, it was actually there when I joined. So they'd obviously, the rockets had been put in there very early on, and um, the well, as I say, the V two was. That was huge. It really was huge because we were allowed to go and have a look at them. Um, and then uh, I know I've got a picture somewhere, I don't know where, of the V2 being taken through Aylesbury, being taken to wherever it was, going to a museum, I presume. And then there were the other smaller versions of the V2. Um and what was that one that used to come over and then would suddenly shut out? The V1s. Yeah. 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 So this this was all sort of um, 
German rocket hardware and, and stuff that had been brought over. Well, it must have been brought over because obviously the, you know, um, the V's weren't English, were they? <laughs> Not the V2s and the V1s. I mean, they, they weren't English. So... Um, and, and was Airmanship Hall open to anybody to go and have a look in? I mean, you know, people who worked at Westcott, they, you know, this was a basic... Yes, I think it was... We'd obviously, as I say, myself and some others went in to have a look round. Um... I can't remember what the situation was regarding getting permission, but I think we would have, you know, got had to get permission to to go in there. There was probably a caretaker in there as well, but it was interesting. How long was it there for? I can't remember when it actually went. Um, well, I suppose it was... I don't even know whether Building 80 was one of the first buildings to be taken down because opposite Building 80 was what they called Building 100 where the bosses were um, because one of the bosses was at one end, farther end of one of the corridors in Building 80. But then... Um, in the build buildings opposite Building 80 was the actual boss of the site, you know, the chief director or whatever they called him. Yeah, they were in the building opposite Building 80. Well, of course, eventually, they all those buildings went, but I can't remember when that was. So... Uh, who were the people who sort of stuck out in your mind? that you worked with at Westcott? Were there any sort of real characters, any any people who, you know, you you really stick out in your memory from working there? I don't know, really. Um, I can't, wouldn't say there was anybody that actually stuck out in my mind, you know, because they were all nice people that I worked with. And um, oh, that was it, I think, you know. It, it's a... Uh, um, but you you were working eventually. You were working sort of directly to the directors of the site and you yeah, know, the sort of yeah. Scene. Well, there was a sort of a a director of each group. Um, I mean, I was down in the, the building S six. Uh, did you know the solids buildings? No, um, I was in S six with the two of the directors that were down there. Um, so uh, what were their names? One was um, Nev Morris. He's he lives at Wendover, but he's we were hoping he might have come on Saturday, but he's not the sort of person to mix. He doesn't enjoy it. But he's still about. Um, then there was um, Kenneth Silman. Um, There must have been another one, but I can't remember what his name was. It's too long ago. <laughs> no, I can't remember what the other one. I think I worked for three in... Um... Oh, golly, it's sort of... It's on the end of my tongue. No, it won't, it won't come. But I know I worked for three of the directors down in S6. Yeah. It, I sort of get the impression working there is a bit of a sort of roller coaster, really, because, you know, during the 50s, it must have been really exciting, lots of stuff going on, and then they cancelled mm. um, They cancelled Blue Streak, you know, and, and, you know, there was sort of bits and pieces going. I mm. mean, how did people feel as as the years went on? You know, did they... They think, oh, you know, it's exciting here in the 50s and then, in, you know, they got a bit depressed in the 60s and how, how were they feeling about things? Um, I wasn't aware of anything... Um, anything particular. Of course, I, I went off what I was saying when they had my retirement party. I had to obviously say my bit about thanking them for their presence. And in the, um, what I was saying, 
was um, somebody asked me um, whether I'd enjoyed working there. And I said then that, you know, I wouldn't have ever thought of leaving because I enjoyed what I was doing. You know, and that was, no, that was, sorry, I've said that wrong. It wasn't, that was when we had the 50th. That was the first big celebration we had, the 50th year. And um, because I was then doing this temporary work and I helped do a lot of the paperwork because on that occasion we had about 300 there. And um, um, <laughs> I was presented with a, a bouquet about this big, you know, it was a massive thing, you know. And um, that was a, a boss of the group was then working at, in Worcestershire, Summerfield. You've heard of Summerfield? Yeah. Well, he was over there and um, he had to make a short speech. And um, then, uh, of course, I had to thank them for the, uh, <laughs> the flowers. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you remember when um, um, Harold Young, basically, Harold Young came to Wesker in the Yeah, I remember, Harold, I remember Harold Young. Yeah, because basically he was there to close it, wasn't he? And then, effectively, uh, the um, uh, Polaris, they, they started doing work on Polaris after that. Do you remember that at all? Not really. No, I, I mean, I've just sort of <laughs> did the work I was supposed to be doing, doing and I didn't really um, go into all the various, you know, n n names of rockets. But, I mean, the... It must have been a bit of a relief because I think you know, um, seventy one. Effectively, I think they they'd been going to be they had been on the verge of closing Wesker. Mm, and, yeah. You know, it got a bit of a reprieve. Uh, did you did you remember that? Um, Were you aware of that? Actually, I mean, was when they started talking about closing. Yes, I was then working the man I was secretary for. He was. No, his job was property and something else. I can't remember what, but it was certainly involved with property. So I did get to know they were starting to talk about closing. And, um, but uh, for some reason or other, I knew that I would have left before it happened. So... It didn't, wouldn't have affected me, you know. So, um, yeah, it's because I was, I was trying to think of how long I'd been retired, wasn't I? Um, so I was 61 when I left. Not Because the reason I was 61 was because um, BAE, uh, no, British Aerospace or whoever, um, they decided to get everybody to retire at 60. But I'd gone just over that when my, well, this was um, the property services, property services, that's what he was called. When he told me that he may not be able to keep me on much longer, but then I got to 61 um, before I actually left. And um, so that was, but um, as, <coughs> excuse me. When I, as I was saying, when they were talking about closing, um, I was sort of obviously concerned about it. But when I um, realised it, I was going to have retired before it actually happened. So, um, but I mean, it's it's great what they've done with it now. Really is. So. I haven't. I, I, I say it's a shame I missed the the tour really because I yeah. you know I'd quite like to have been. But mm. I might I might have a word with Ed and see if I can have a little you know we can go around there sometime rather because I'd like to you know get some video of some of the old sites. Uh, yes, yeah, so I mean. What's going on there. Um, I mean he knows that you were ill and couldn't come last Saturday, so um, he might 
um, you know, yeah. take you round yeah. if you ask him. Um, I'm just trying to think. What are there any sort of funny stories that you can remember about the place from the time you were there? Um, not really. What well, I mean, one. I mean, let, let's go back. Um, there must have been lots of dignitaries and big wigs and people like that who who visited there. Uh, from time to time. I don't um, know whether you can remember, you know, any of those coming and any of the preparations that were made for them. Um, well, no, I, I didn't actually. I wasn't actually involved in that sort of thing. If um, anybody was coming, but I thought of one or two funny things. <laughs> a couple of them are on a photograph, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, no, the my first day there was obviously very shy <laughs> so the group i was working for of course they took me with them to go to lunch and i was sitting at one end of the a table where there was about six of us at the table i think and we had a salad and i i, I shall never forget this there was a lady sitting the other end of the table and I stuck my fork in a pickled onion. What did it do? Went straight down the table into her lap. <laughs> I should never forget that. <laughs> yes. You yeah. Mortified, right? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. No, one of the, as I say, we used to have after they stopped having an annual ball, we used to have parties, in the um, senior senior mess as they called it and um, we used to have games and um, if you lost you had to do something you know silly and do you remember Mr Dunning no he was one of the you know the top bosses um, I lost this game and of course I had to pay a forfeit that forfeit was to wrap him up in toilet paper. I had to start from his neck all the way down and wrap him up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know who's more embarrassed him or you? <laughs> I think he, he enjoyed, he was the sort of man that he wouldn't mind you doing it, you know. Um, but he was laughing while I was doing it, you know. <laughs> I, I heard a I heard a story once while I was down there that somebody was visiting and they they ended up having to paint the coal. They had to paint the coal outside because they didn't, you know. <laughs> didn't, you know, maybe that's that's one I need to talk to mm -mm. somebody else. About. I, didn't know <laughs> yeah, I don't one, know that one. That one <laughs> you remembered or not? No, no, I don't uh, know that one. No. Uh, I, th I think I've just about gone through my list. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything else that you, you know, you can think of about your time at Westcott or any any other stories that you remember from Westcott. Not that really. I think we've just remember. we've covered most of what uh, yeah. involved me. You know. Yeah. Um, no, not not. I can't really think of anything that's. Because it know. was four, Was it forty odd years you were there? Sorry? 40 odd years you were there? That's... Yeah, it was just over 40. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a long, long, long time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But as I said on one of the, you know, the 50th, when I had to say something, I said I'd, uh, you know, never think of leaving because I enjoyed what I was doing. So uh, that's what it uh, involves, you know. I think. Um, when you were there for quite a long time, you got a present like that. <laughs> you know, at, uh, I mean, what I got that's on the table was um, just the section where I was working. They right. did a collection, and that's what I got from them. Mm. But then it got the, um, you know, the music thing from the company. Mm. So, uh, yeah. I well, as I say, I I enjoyed it. I think when I when I got over the 
first part of like when I was taken to Farnborough every week for two or three weeks and then went to Oxford School. I think I was glad when I got over those, but then I settled. Um, but I never did. Um, there was on one occasion, well, I forgot one of the one occasion when my boss went to Summerfield and when he got me in one day and told me he was going there, he said, um, now I'm not going to ask you because I know what the answer will be. You wouldn't consider coming with me, would you? I said, well, thank you for mentioning it, but no, because it would mean moving home and all that, you know, so I did have the chance, but um, no. So uh, then I was without a secretary job um, for two or three months, I think it was, and I was starting to get concerned then as to whether they'd keep me on. But I was given a sort of um, clerical job with a friend of mine who's, she was actually at the do on, on Saturday, her and her husband. Um, I worked with her, she was secretary to somebody else, and I worked with her for, until they, it was then that they gave me the property services man to be secretary to him because his secretary left. And I was fortunate then, otherwise, I don't think I would have been kept on. But uh, no, my friend that I worked with then, as I say, she was the, her and her husband were there on Saturday. They live at Little Marlow. Um, do you know out that way? Yeah. Yeah, they live at Little Marlow, which is off the Bourne End Road, you know, so yeah, and we meet. Not once a month, but roughly we meet now and again. She comes over here, and and I go over there. I'm actually going over there on the twenty eighth. Over old times. <laughs> yeah. These are, these are your kids and your children, are they? And these <laughs> that one. He is a member of a music group. Right. Called. It's not well known, but it's called Blake. Right. And. My, I've got a cousin lives in Enfield, and she is absolute nuts on that group. <laughs> the number of times she goes to see them is unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway, um, I I did say to her I have been with her a couple of times to see them. They're absolutely brilliant, and I said to her I think it was might have been when because I, I I go up and stay with her for. Christmas mm. because she lives on her own as well and um, I said oh I said oh, at some point you know when they there's a convenient because they're all over the country and she'll go no matter where they are you know I mean if it was up in Scotland she wouldn't go but you know not as far as that but she does go distances to see them I said could I go again when it's convenient to you oh yes she said so She's taking me on, um, it's the weekend of the 7th and 8th of May. Well, I've got a cousin who used to live in Grendon, in one of the houses over opposite. Um, unfortunately, he's, they moved to um, Old Stratford, Milton Keynes, and his wife died while they were over there. And um, he's 90 on the 8th of May, so they're having a do for him out at Bedford because his daughter lives in Bedford. Mm. And so I'm going to that because I think there's another couple in Grendon who were very friendly with him and they asked me occasionally, you know, oh, where is he, you know. I said, brilliant for 90, you know. 